Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at date of movement in the CP1H uh, PLC by Omron. And what we're going to do is look at several different instructions. Up here on my screen here, we have uh, several listed and we'll go through each one. Let's just uh, close that down, move things over, and what we'll do is look at our first instruction. And I have some bits set up here that I can toggle on and off as I'm communicating to, them, to my uh, PLC here. And you can tell that I'm communicating because of the flashing light. So let's look at this first instruction. What it will do is it's a move, it'll move a 16-bit number or register um, or word into a destination location. And if I just look at the visible symbol, that's basically what I'm doing. So I'm taking my source word here and I'm moving it over to my destination. So if we look at the uh, data itself, we'll just uh, toggle this window open. You can see here that right now data memory zero contains the value zero, which I can also display up there. What you can do, what we'll do now is just turn that on. So I'll set that on. All right, it says we have to be in monitor mode, yes. Okay, so now we're in monitor mode and we turn that on. So now the number one, two, three, four goes into data memory zero and you can actually see this down here. There's my value in hex and this is my value in the individual bits in that channel. And remember that um, data movement really doesn't care uh, what the value is, it's just moving bits of information, either the word or the bit into another location. So now we can turn that off. And let's go on to the next one. And here we have a move not. And what the move not will actually do is it actually will take the inverse of whatever's in the source word and put it into the destination. So in our case here, it's going to take again the number one, two, three, four. Whatever bits are on uh, in that 16 bits, it will inverse them and then put it into uh, data memory one. So let's see that happen. We'll turn this on. And when that does, it puts the number EDCB into uh, data memory one, which is actually, if you look at the top one, where we put one, two, three, four, it's the exact inverse um, that we're putting in. So exactly what the instruction said it's gonna do. So we'll turn that one back off again. We'll go to the next instruction, which is a double move. Now a double move, all it will do is use two registers now, or 32 bits at a time, and move that data in. So again, we'll take a look at that. Um, so we basically take a source, plus the source plus one, and move it into the destination, destination plus one. So this will be, because we're moving into here into data memory two, it'll be two and three. Okay, let's see that run. As soon as we turn it on, you can see that my one, two, three, four is in data memory three and five, six, seven, eight is in data memory two. So it did exactly as it said. So we reset that. And our next one is our double move knot. So double move knot, um, again, it just basically inverts the, uh, the bits in here and stores it into uh, the destination and destination plus one. So in our case here, uh, data memory four and data memory five. So let's, let's turn that on. And sure enough, um, one, all these Fs and D, you'll see that basically I only have a couple of bits that are actually set or actually one. So four and five, we actually get the value of one bit here left, which is represented by this D here that's that's on. If it was an F, then all of them would be zero. So that instruction works well. Turn that off now. Our next instruction is the move bit. So instead of moving a word at a time, we're going to specify an exact bit that we're going to move. So if we look at that instruction, we're going to specify what bit to move in the source word and move it to the destination word. So in our case here, we want to move um, bit seven 
it into the destination area and we want to take bit one of the source word. So in this case here, data memory four, we're going to move that to data memory six into the, into the, the word here. So let's take a look at what, how that works. We'll turn this on. And when we do, what you'll notice is that right now it's taken data memory four, bit number one, so that's zero one, so that one there, and it's transferring it into data memory six, which is here, and it's the seventh bit. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then here's my seventh bit, which is now on. So it's just moving that one bit and moving it over to the destination location. We will set that off now. And our next one is a move digit. Now a digit is actually four bits in length. So in our case here, if we look at our instruction, we're actually going to um, move a four digits from one location to another location. So let's see how that works. And we will energize that. So it takes uh, the source word is data memory two, which we have here. This is a five, six, seven, eight. And what we're going to do is we actually take the first digit and we're going to put in a data memory seven. Here's data memory seven down here. So we take the Z zero, that's number one. So that's the first digit. And we're going to move uh, one digit. That's what the zero represents there. And we're going to move in the second location, which is the third one over, which is right there. So that instruction, as you can see, uh, moves those four bits quite nicely. So let's turn that one off and let's go on to the next one, which is a transfer multiple bit. So in this case here, it, before we used the bit transfer, it was only the one bit at a time. This one here will actually transfer several bits at a time. And we can do that um, by specifying the number of bits we're gonna move. In our case here, it's zero one. We're going to go to the destination location, which will be the seventh bit over. And we're going to take the start at the first one, which is bit number one of the source location. So when we turn that on. What will happen is that we'll take a look at uh, data memory four, which is this one right here. We're going to take that one and we're going to put in the uh, seventh location again in data memory eight. So there's data memory eight. There's my seventh location. And sure enough, it's been on. So we'll turn that off now. And the next one is a block transfer. So what we're going to do is take a number of words from one area and put them into uh, the same or copy them over into another area. So if we take a look at the uh, actual instruction here, this is my block area. So we specify the number of words. We take the source, take a group of those and move them over. In our case here, we're going to start at data memory zero and we're going to, um, we're going to take nine of them and we're going to move them over to data memory 10. So we're going to just copy everything here and move it over. So let's see how that works. Let's turn that on. And what it does, what you'll see is now that data memory zero, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of these down to eight will actually be transferred and they transfer now to data memory 10 and onward. So you'll see that it's the exact duplicate of what I have above. So that seems to work well. I'll turn that one off. And our next one is actually the block set. What it will actually do is take a um, a word and or a value and distribute to a starting word to the end word. And we look at that. So basically it's taking the source data and sticking it into a block of memory within the PLC. So let's turn that on. And what we have here is we're in zero from data memory one all the way to data memory 20. So what we should see is as soon as I turn that on, all of these registers then we'll go back to zero except for the first one which will still contain my value one two three four so let's turn that one on and when i do sure enough i get um, 
down here, all of my values here are now zero. So that's what the block set will do is actually just almost like zeros out or resets those values. So let's turn that one back off again and go on to the next one, which is exchange. Exchange just exchanges uh, one location with another one. So in our case here, what we want to do is we take D1 and put that value into uh, or D, D0 I'm trying to put into D1 and D1 put it back into D0. And what it, you'll see here is that I have an at sign which means it only does it on the leading edge of the input. So when the, we have a transition from off to on then it will actually do it. So in our case here it will only do it once which if we didn't do it once it would do it every scan and we'd have a tolling back and forth. So let's set that on and sure enough what you'll see now is whatever was in channel 0 which is 1, 2, 3, 4 now moves to 1 and the 0 goes back into or the, the value in, in 1 was 0 which goes back into uh, data memory 0. So they just exchanged the information. Okay we'll set that off. And then our next one is our double exchange. And the double exchange, um, it basically takes uh, two words at a time, or a double word, and flips it with another double word information there. So we take a look at that instruction. So it's basically the same thing, except that we're using now uh, four words in, in total. We'll turn that on. And sure enough, the the value in 0 and 1 have now gone to 2 and 3 and the value in 2 and 3 have gone to 0 and 1. And again I use the at sign to pick up that transition from off to on only as a one shot. We'll turn that off. And our next one is single word distribute. So what this will actually do is it's going to um, store the data uh, from the source into the destination with an offset. So in other words, in up here we have the number 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to store it into uh, destination D0 with an offset of 6. So that means that um, offset 6, we should actually see the value come in data memory 5. So let's uh, try that out. We'll click that on. And what we'll see is, sure enough, in the data memory 0 plus an offset 6, actually, which would be data memory 6, we have the value 1, 2, 3, 4. So exactly as it says. So basically, we have an offset to tell it where to put the information. We'll turn that back off again. We'll go on to the collect data. And the collect is similar. Um, to our single word distribute and but what will happen now is it will take the base plus an offset and store it into our destination. So our base 0 plus the offset of 3 um, which will be right here data memory 3 and what we'll do is store that in data memory 20. So it should take 1, 2, 3, 4 um, and then at this location and store it into data memory 20 which is currently right now is 0. So let's turn that one on. Um, there we go. And when we do we can look at, you can see right here that data memory 20 now contains 1, 2, 3, 4. If we look down our monitoring data memory 20 again 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can reset that. And going down there's two other ones. One is moved to a, a register instruction and this is an index register. So basically we, we can take any um, word or bit location and the word or bit um, then will go into the index register and that's what we discussed last time when we talked about numbering systems within the CP1H controller. And the last one we have is we can move the timer present values or counter present values into the index register as well. And that would be ideal if you know we have our example here of our timer. 
um, which is uh, memory retentive because we have used a counter with some pulse. So we can actually take that value and, and flip it into our, our uh, index register. So we can manipulate data more in the, in the CP1H. All right. Now all the links and, and documentation, further documentation, can be found on our website. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information here on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do that, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free eBooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to help us out um, is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. All right, thanks for watching.